I'm now going to go through the steps of a consolidation very quickly. So we've seen the output of the consolidation in terms of the management reports and the finance dashboard. But I'm just quickly going to show you the overview of the workflow of the consolidation process. So again, I'm on my home page within SAP Analytics Cloud. And you can see next to uh, uh, my charts, I've actually got a calendar highlight. So this is my workflow. So the consolidation process is built into the calendar in terms of workflow. And this is where we assign tasks. So I'm just going to grab one of these tasks, which have been assigned to me. And this opens up into my um, uh, calendar view. And if I just click on the top, I'm actually in a process called month end uh, consolidation. Uh, and reporting and you can see below all the steps of a um, of the consolidation so a little bit around the preparation ownership and x rates the submitting the flash forecast we then collect the trial balance from the local ledgers and then we can also check the balance we can complete our intercompany matching complete our local company submission there's also an area for forecast submission which i'll be coming back to later and then at this point, once all our local P&Ls, all the supplementary data has been collected, we can complete our consolidation. And then finally, we lock the date period and we complete our local commentary and complete our month end uh, reporting. So you can see looking across within the calendar, you've got a start date and a due date. And each of these tasks can be assigned to an individual. So you'll just look on the right hand side. Um, you'll see there's a start and the due date of a task. Uh, it's been assigned to myself and also there's a click, which I'll go on to in a moment for us to go to the task. I can also look at the workflow via a Gantt view. So it gives us a flow. Again, you can see the various tasks of the uh, consolidation uh, process. You'll also notice um, if I just drop down that we've, we've got um, uh, uh, a reviewer stage so I could make the change to the consolidation for example input a journal but someone else could actually review it and approve it there's also reminders and additional information which you can add so a lovely really nice tool to, to complete collaboration so I'm going to quickly show you uh, some of the tasks of the consolidation but not all of them so we have an ownership table so I'm just going to click on the ownership register. This is where we create our consolidation groups. And we also maintain our um, consolidation methods. So here you can see um, uh, the companies and the consolidation groups. So we have a consolidation group to report currency euro. Also, we're allowed to do multiple report currencies. So we have one for USD. We've also got a separate consolidation group here for tax purposes. Here, each company is assigned the consolidation scope, and then we actually assign them a, a method, for example, whether it's a subsidiary or whether it's a holding company, and we can actually put the consolidation percentage in and the minority interest. So from this table, we're actually generating automatic um, non-controlling interests or minority interest uh, 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 postings. And this is effectively our ownership table. And also it's time dependent. So if we have one uh, ownership structure for one financial year, then it changes the next. We can make those changes without losing the, um, the original uh, ownership structure. And we can also, um, we, we, we can also complete the ownership for version. So if we have a certain ownership structure, budget or forecast, or we have a, where we want to test an acquisition on disposal, we can easily do that within this ownership team. So I'm just going to flick back um, and you'll see here a submit and a decline. So once I've completed this task, I can submit it. But I'm going to just ignore that for a moment and pop back to the calendar. It's a separate task for uh, maintaining exchange rates. I'm not going to show that. But now we're going to go in to submit the flash. So it allows you to submit results ahead of the month ends. For example, if you wanted an early warning on profit, uh, generally companies use a flash. So if I just click on the one task, And I'm going to open up the flash input template. You'll notice I've selected seeds business. And now 
uh, we, 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 you'll notice that the seeds business company has come through. So that's the name of the company and the context of these being brought through. What I'm being faced with here then is a P&L, which is period plan uh, versus a budget. And this is where I effectively input my flash. So simply enough, I'm just going to reduce my flash. Hit enter. And the data has been sent to the database. Now, um, when it's in yellow, it actually shows me I haven't quite yet saved it. So I can either publish it or revert it. So in, just as an instance, I'm going to take it back to the numbers I have. So you can see it's very easy to go undo any changes uh, you, yeah, you, you don't wish to see. Okay, so that's completed my flash. I'm just going to return to my calendar. We then collect the, the trial balance. So we load the general ledger either by a flash, uh, either by um, a connection to your source ERP or from a flat file. And then we move on to our intercompany matching process where we're looking, where we translate the data and look at both sides of an intercompany relationship and just check that the payables and receivables are equal or, or if there's an allowable difference, similarly on the PL. We then complete uh, our local submission of the data. Again, this is a report showing PL, balance sheet, and cash flow, and any supplementary data headcount where you can view the data which has been submitted. I'm going to jump on a little bit and just show you um, uh, a manual journal. So we've got a manual journal where you can post line item details. So I'm just going to click on that. And here is a list of our journals we have within the month. And these are line item details. I can also within here create a new journal just by clicking this button. It opens up a new journal type and then I can change I can I can select the month, select the company, select the audit trail and the currency, enter a description uh, of a journal and then add items. So that's our line item journal functionality. Okay, I'm just going to uh, pop back to the calendar. We can also cater for uh, historical FX rates. So for example, value investment in subsidiaries and investment in share capital can be held at a historical FX rates. When we run currency translation, the difference between a closing balance balance sheet rate and a historical FX is posted to currency translation adjustment in reserves. So now I'm just going to run the consolidation. I'm going to open up the consolidation workbook. And here we've just got a button where uh, we, we simply press and it runs the um, consolidation steps. So you'll, you'll notice here that I can select a version so we can run consolidation on actuals, budgets or forecasts. I can also select which companies I want to run the consolidation on and also which periods. So I can do multiple periods. And effectively what this consolidation program runs is carry forward. So it brings our, opening, our closing balance from the previous financial year to the current year. It moves the net income from the P&L to current year retained earnings. It runs currency translation. It is also a cash flow calculation, so moving the movement in the trial balance to the cash flow. And finally, the consolidation adjustments, so eliminations of intercompany and also eliminations of investments and share capital, but also on non controlling interests uh, posting. So once I've run that, within the consolidation workbook, I then have a series of reports which I can use to review the numbers. So I'm just going to show you a selection of these. So, for example, the income statement. So numbers have now been running consolidation. I'm looking at the um, a P and L. I can drill down, obviously, to the uh, GL accounts. I'm then going to take a look at a uh, balance sheet. You see now I've actually switched in a balance sheet. I'm actually uh, I have the um, the company in the columns and you can see uh, the, the company's going across the columns and in the end we've got an elimination entity. So this is where our consolidation adjustments are being posted. For example, our elimination of investments and also our elimination of intercompany um, 
uh, trade receivables, and trade payables. I can also look at this by audit trail. So this actually shows me all the consolidation postings. So at the right hand side, uh, we start with the local data. So the local data has been flat filed in, in this case. Then we have a manual input. So someone's posted a journal um, uh, to, uh, to make a local local adjustment. We then have our, our consolidation adjustments. For example, intercompany balance sheet elimination, our investment and equity. That's just a selection of consolidation adjustments which we can automate. So this allows the users to see the balance sheet or the PL and the, the postings which have been made. So once we uh, press, um, once we run consolidation, we also have a cash flow. So a cash flow has been um, a reported an indirect cash flow statement. And we've also got a series of um, validations, just some simple ones here where we're checking that the balance sheet balances, cash flow balances between the balance sheet and the cash flow statement, and also that net income uh, on a PL equals uh, current year retained earnings. But we can add additional validations uh, uh, to this report. We also have a currency translation check report showing our, our FX rates and a check to check the eliminations and some movements reports. So this is a, uh, this completes the area of consolidation and now I'd like to move on to forecasting and budgeting.